Sally, one of the girls, was one of the five who made it out alive. She has been silent about the incident since recording her statement. She cites a man who wore a human skin mask in her statement. She couldn't see the man's genuine face because of this. Following that, we are presented with Lila, a young lady. She inquired about Sally with the owner of a Texas gas station. He informs her that Sally has been seeking the killer for 30 years and that he has yet to meet him. Melody, Lila's younger sister, arrives later. Melody informs her sister that we must depart immediately. Meanwhile, the proprietor of the petrol station inquires about their future trip. They don't say anything to him after that and leave. Melody runs into her pal Dante shortly after coming out. Melody is greeted by Dante, who expresses his willingness to follow her. Dante and Melody had actually purchased a ghost town. They want to show their investors that town because it hasn't been developed. As a result, they'll be able to start developing. He informs her that Sally has been seeking the killer for 30 years and that he has yet to meet him. Melody, Lila's younger sister, arrives later. Melody informs her sister that we must depart immediately. Dandy's friend was also present, and a man with a gun arrived at the gas station. Melody says something about the man. That man responds to her as well, and the two of them set out for the town they've just bought. Meanwhile, a gas station employee swerves his automobile in front of theirs. They meet two officers on the road as they continue on their trek. They are apprehended, investigated, and one of the officers reveals Dante his identification card. It also warns that this is a dangerous place and that you should contact us if you need assistance. They arrive later at their town and immediately begin planning the community's future. They run across the man who greeted them at the petrol station in the meantime. Melody questions Dante about the man's presence. He introduces himself as their contractor and promises to start working on the renovations as soon as possible. They notice a flag that has been put improperly after this man has left. Dante and Melody go into the building to take down the flag. Meanwhile, they learn that this structure was once an orphanage. Melody took a look at the images that had been hung. She came upon one of the photographs in which the child's face was obscured. Dante tries to remove the flag using the window. He walks downstairs to tell Melody since his hands couldn't reach there. Meanwhile, another lady walks up to them and says, you are welcome in my home. They're both taken aback when they see her because they don't think anyone lives here. That old lady sits them down and offers them tea. She explains that she used to be the director of a local orphanage. Melody states that the bank has seized custody of the property, and she wonders how you could continue to live here. That old lady informs them that she has handed over all of the funds to the bank. Following that, she becomes the owner of the property, which Dante couldn't believe. This flag belonged to her grandfather and was his last memento, according to that old lady. Meanwhile, a colossal figure appears from the stairway, terrifying Melody. That old lady assures him that everything is well in this town. That man walks away after hearing this. Melody learns from the old lady that this is the orphanage's final child. She continues to look after him to this day. Dante, meanwhile, had dispatched the cops to the scene. When the authorities arrive, they inform the elderly lady that she must go. Hearing this gives that old lady a heart attack. Later, that colossal man appears and embraces his mother. Officers notify them that girl need medical attention. Dante's pal works at the hospital's administrative offices as well. She was able to assist the old lady as a result of this. Melody was staring at the enormous man as the officers got into their cars. He was furious with her. The contractor throws down the flag, and the man rags even more. Meanwhile, investors arrive and are given a tour of the facility. That elderly woman died on the way to the hospital at the same moment. That large man starts crying when he sees her because he believes she is his mother. He makes a futile attempt to reawaken his mother. The office notifies him that his mother has died after touching his hands. That man is ragged, and he breaks the officer's hand forcefully. He bends his hand when a cop tries to shoot him. The bullet subsequently hits a driving police officer, resulting in a collision. Melody, on the other hand, was up for sale, and everyone was bidding on the property. While checking her phone, Melody receives a message from Dante's pal. She notifies him that the elderly woman has died. Melody informs Dante of this because the old guy perished as a result of their actions. Melody informs her sister that they would be departing from this location. As a result, no case could be brought against us, and Lila is taken aback when she hears this. The gas station attendant is paying attention to them. On the other side, when Dante's pal wakes up in the automobile. Both officers have perished, she notices. That man has gone somewhere by taking his mom. In the meantime, he notices his mother in the rearview mirror. Her skin was being ripped from her face by him. 
Dandy's friend seeks assistance from the radio. That enormous man has removed the skin from his mother's face. He kisses his mum on the cheek. That colossal figure turned out to be the Leatherman. When Dante's friend witnesses what's going on, she tells everyone on the radio. The gas station owner listens carefully and is taken aback by what he hears. As Dante's friend discovers, the cop is still alive. She attempts to recruit his assistance, but Leatherface appears. Dante's friend tries to assist her by feigning faintness. Dante's pal makes an attempt to flee the situation. Leatherface, on the other hand, appears right in front of them. He slits his belly after clutching her neck, and the girl dies as well. Leatherface later returns to the area to avenge his mother. The gas station employee began to remove Melody's car keys just as she was about to leave with her sister. Dante inquires as to why he is acting this way. That man alleges you killed the old lady and wants to know if the property where she lived belongs to her. After hearing this, Dante returns to his car to double check the property's papers. Dante, on the other hand, was unable to locate the property's documents. After hearing this, Melody believes that this property is most likely owned by the elderly lady. They've made a blunder as well. Dante informs Melody. It's not possible. On the other side, the proprietor of the gas station contacts Sally. Leatherface has returned, he informs her. Sally vows to exact vengeance on him after hearing this. She has a lot of guns and weapons in her car, and she later sees images of her buddies. Whom Leatherface assassinated. Dante and Melody, on the other hand, proceed to the elderly lady's house in search of the property paperwork. Melody later discovers the old lady's cash chest, which held the property paperwork. Melody realizes that the old lady wasn't lying after watching the papers. This land, on the other hand, belonged to her. In the meantime, she notices a movement. After hearing that voice, Dante walks towards the kitchen. When he finds Leatherface lurking behind him, he feels rather terrified. Dante's neck is cut by Leatherface, and he begins to bleed profusely as a result. When Melody descends the stairs, she sees Leatherface. She goes into the old lady's cupboard to hide. In honor of his mother, he paints her face with makeup. Leatherface rags when he glances out the window and sees a large crowd. He makes the decision to murder them. Melody attempts to run, but Leatherface reappears in the room. Melody goes under the bed to hide. Leatherface gets the hammer and begins striking it against the wall. Dante, on the other hand, was still alive when the noise awoke him. He hurries out of the house, drawing the attention of the gas station attendant. When he sees Dante in such a state, he is taken aback. He questions Dante on who is to blame for everything. Before he can tell him anything, Dante passes away. That man runs into the house and grabs the weapon. He tells the girl to call the cops. Leatherface shattered the wall and hid behind it with his chainsaw. He starts his chainsaw while keeping it on the ground. Meanwhile, a gas station employee arrives and engages in combat with Leatherface. Leatherface's feet, on the other hand, break when he hits them with his hammer. Leatherface later tosses him through a window, causing his face to bleed. He collapses after passing out. In the meantime, he observes Melody cowering beneath the bed. Melody is able to flee after he retrieves the keys from his pocket. Meanwhile, Leatherface is struck in the head by the hammer and dies as a result. On the other hand, when Sally arrives at Taxes, she notices the same automobile driving by. That had officer's bodies, and he discovers the leather-faced mother's body. Whose face was cut, and she learns it was done by Leatherface after witnessing it. She rushes to the town to assassinate him. Everyone on the bus, on the other hand, was sitting. When Lila mentions getting off the bus, a young lady interrupts her. Lila refuses to listen to her and goes to the bus entrance to find Melody. On the way, she comes discovers Dandy's body and is stunned. Melody, on the other hand, tries to run as soon as she receives the keys. Leatherface, on the other hand, sees her fleeing and slams his hammer down on her. She falls as a result, and he proceeds to murder Melody with his chainsaw. Melody, on the other hand, attempts to avoid going underneath, but Leatherface begins digging with his chainsaw. As a result, he has the ability to murder Melody. Melody flees, and Leatherface sets out to get her. Melody, on the other hand, hears his sister beckoning her. After witnessing her sister sob, she begins to cry, and Leatherface listens. After he begins his chainsaw underground, Melody's sister saves her. Melody is escorted from the room after she smashes the window. Both jump into the bus, and Melody hands the driver the keys and orders him to move quickly. As soon as the driver gets behind the wheel, he recognizes Leatherface in front of their vehicle. That driver goes out because he believes someone has gone missing and wants to check on him. Later, the severed head of the Leatherface is tossed into the bus. When people witness that, they become afraid. 
Leatherface later boarded the bus and began slaughtering passengers with his chainsaw. There was a man filming a live video there, and when everyone saw it, they were horrified. Melody and Lila scurry onto the bus to seek refuge. Leatherface murders everyone on the bus with his chainsaw. Later, Leatherface detects a disturbance coming from the back of the bus. Lila makes it onto the bus, but Melody is stuck inside. Melody's sister turns her inside out, and the two of them save and flee. Sally arrives later, driving her car. Sally is informed by Melody that he is a psychopath who has murdered all of her pals. Sally tells them the killer's name is Leatherface, and she's been seeking for him for 50 years. With the revolver in her hand, Sally loads them into her car and drives to Leatherface's house. After arriving, she points her shotgun in the direction of Leatherface. And she wonders if he remembers her. Leatherface doesn't respond when she tells him you've slain all of her friends. When he hears this, he grabs his chainsaw and murders both girls. He attacks both of them as soon as he arrives, wanting to murder them. Meanwhile, Sally fires a shot at him, but he is uninjured. Sally identifies herself as the same girl who fled from you. As a result of hearing this, Leatherface flees. Sally provides them the keys to her car and instructs them on how to proceed. When Sally hears Leatherface's chainsaw, she rushes over. When she approaches him, Leatherface attacks her. Sally was about to fire her revolver at him. Her rifle jams, so she stabs him with her dagger, but he is unaffected. With his chainsaw, he slices Sally in half. Melody and her sister try to flee, but Leatherface rams their car with his chainsaw. Melody becomes distracted as a result, and their car is involved in an accident. Melody tells her sister to flee because she is a formidable young woman. Meanwhile, Lila has fled and Leatherface has appeared. Melody informs him that anything we did with your mother was incorrect. Please forgive us, but Leatherface fires up his chainsaw, and Lila appears once more. After grabbing the gas station employee's short pistol. Lila, on the other hand, wouldn't be able to shoot him because she doesn't know how to use a gun. Later, he starts after her, but Sally steps in and shoots Leatherface in the back. Leatherface subsequently runs and Lila rescues whoever was still alive. Lila informs Sally that if she keeps running like this, Leatherface would catch up with her. She offers her the shotgun and orders her to assassinate him. She kills Leatherface by taking the gun after listening to her. Leatherface, meanwhile, attacks her and captures her before jumping into the ocean. After a while, Lila reappears and tries to grip her shotgun. Meanwhile, Leatherface appears and strikes her feet with his chainsaw, which he has started. Melody shows up when he tries to kill Lila. After she stops Leatherface, he throws her backside. When Lila started firing him, her gun was out of bullets. Melody then strikes Leatherface with the chainsaw he has. They both believe he is dead after he falls into the water. Both sisters sat in the car the next day, ready to leave. They speak while putting the car on autopilot, and then Leatherface appears. Melody is taken out.